That's when you have a periodic load, okay? When something is changing in a sinusoidal manner, okay, a cyclic load, then we have to be very careful with the materials, okay? Cyclic loads, they cause fatigue. Like when you take a clip and you turn it several, several times, it's going to eventually break. So we are very afraid of uh, cyclic loads, what it can do to the to the structural to to the structure to our structure okay so that's a video on vortex shedding Okay, <coughs> so let's just try, you know, it has been a week, so we have a bit to, to, to remember what actually we were doing, okay? So the first thing, we, we started going into this world of the offshore structure. You know, from the point of view, it, it, it's a lot of money that is invested on that structure. And also there are some things that, some design features that we have to be careful. It includes, it might include a lot of things. Okay, and we saw also the different types we have supported from the bottom or floating. And in floating, we made a distinction between neutrally buoyant, simply I control the ballast, but I allow it to move roughly with the surface of the of the sea. While positively buoyant, I'm actually bringing it, anchoring down, such that if these anchoring devices were not in place, it will simply take go to another position. Okay. Hydrun, uh, it's a TLP. We have just a few kilometers, where a few, a lot of kilometers offshore, um, the fjord. <coughs> we saw how it looked like. We saw some things for FPSO. It's important how it is fixed. It has to be still fixed to avoid any drafting. Okay, if it, you have significant drafting, a few hundred meters, kilometers to the right or to the left, that can affect all of these the riser okay all of the pipes all of the so we have to find a way to keep it in place such that it won't draft too much okay. and also of course not investing a lot of power and energy <coughs> we could do it with thrusters okay the way sometimes it's done in drilling but also that takes a lot of a lot of energy okay uh, so then we said how do we select offshore structures Okay, and I'm focusing here on the technical reasons, trying to give you a very kind of a wide and a general overview. So there are a few things that are, you know, I'm not discussing here. But basically, I, sh I show you what water depth is one of the main criteria that you use. Basically, if you go above certain water depth, you cannot use bottom supported anymore. Okay. Then the other thing which is very important and has a lot of implications is the location of the well tree. If it's going to be dry or if it's going to be wet. And, and we discussed if we have, for example, the water depth is, is you know, not less than 1,500 meter and the reservoir is relatively concentrated, we tend to drill from a single location, okay? Well, if it's the reservoir, because here, let's say, I can try, I can have a platform with a drilling package. I could have a spar with a drilling package. I could have a TLP with a drilling package. And I don't have to move that drilling package. The location from which I make the drilling stays all the way fixed to drill the majority of the wells. In this case, if it's very spread, okay, then I have to go for subsea wells. And then in that case, I also try to drill as many as possible from the same location. Because every time I have to move the ship from one place to another is a big operation, which is very costly. So I ha if I have to do it 30 times for 30 wells, you know, it, it will be very extremely expensive. So I try to group them such that I do it from, from only a few locations. Okay. Then we said also depends on the intervention needs of my well. Okay. If I, I can trust typically for subsea wells, for example, the intervention uh, frequency might be every five years, from five to ten years. Okay, if you have some other things like you have ESP or you have gas lift, then the intervention time will be shorter. The pump, in the case of the ESP, it might last 
four months, it might last two years. So if you have to service, let's say you have in Peregrino 30 wells, and you have to go with a ship, it's a big ship, okay, it's like a drilling ship. You have to come, connect to the well, connect the VOP, retrieve the tubing, so it's a big operation. And if I have to do it every six months, for example, that will be extremely, extremely expensive. So in those cases, I try to have kind of a dry uh, Christmas, a, a dry Christmas tree solution. Another thing is that if I'm expecting infill drilling, okay, let's say I want to drill twice as many wells in the future, either by re-entering existing wells or simply by drilling new wells, usually that means I have to make the platform very, very big with a lot of extra space, and that will be very costly. Okay, so sometimes I prefer to use, uh, if I have to do a lot of infill drilling, um, I, I might combine that with, with subsidy with subsea trees okay then one comment there how that affects the offshore structure we said the only offshore structures that allow dry christmas tree okay if that's what we need then we have all the ones that are uh, bottom supported which are remember these are for um, is uh, not so deep okay below 500 meters and then for deep waters we have tlp and spar and, and let's see, I think we have, we can start our discussion today on that part. So, let, let's repeat that sentence. Structures that allow Okay, and remember, that's a very big thing, okay, to have the tree on the top. You can first open and see inside the well, you can retrieve tubing, you can do any changes you want on the completion, much easier, you don't have to mobilize a rig, okay? Another thing is you have access to the tree, you have access to every valve. If you have to change something, you just go on the platform and you change it. If you have a problem on a subsea system, you, everything is controlled remotely, many kilometers from the, from the well, okay? So that creates some, some, some challenges. So structures that allow dry Christmas tree are bottom supported. Okay. And then we have basically we have spar and TLP. <clears throat> and they have in some attempts to have also semi sub. And I'm not sure if there are any installation with semi sub. Okay, but but the the most uh um, the preferred is to a spar or TLP, okay? Simply because in TLP you have these tethers that maintain the structure in place. So if there is any change, significant change, it will won't deviate much. So the movement is restricted in TLP, okay? TLP the movement is restricted by these tethers. And in the spar, the main difference is that it has such a deep hole, okay, such such a deep hole, that even though there is a lot of activity happening on the wave and on the wind, it can still keep the fluctuation on heave, on all the other movements, relatively low, okay? And we say relatively low, it's it changes from case to case, but basically around three meters, okay? That's, that's what you should, you should have. So here, the long hole allows or limits, okay, the movement. Making it suitable for, uh, for dry uh, Christmas trees. However, in that case, you have to be a bit careful, okay? In bottom supported, in some bottom supported, you drill simply the wells are drilled, the way they are drilled, um, uh, onshore, okay? If the water depth is uh, is not is uh, small, okay? Wells are drilled like onshore, okay? Where you have this series of concentric uh, pipes, where you have the 
the conductor, you have the surface casing, intermediate casing, another casing, production casing, just basically the same way. But you extend the conductor all the way up. And be careful here with one thing, okay? In a, in a well, where is the load? Who is, who is kind of supporting the, the weight of the well? is a conductor okay the conductor if you remember the the weight of the well is supported by the conductor okay so if you remember we make a hole then we put that famous conductor then we make another hole and then put this surface casing okay then we make another hole and then we make this intermediate casing okay that's how we drill first put the conductor then we drill another one put the the casing and the thing is that the conductor in all of that the conductor is the one that is holding the weight of the well okay can be a lot of lot of layers that you have and the way it is holding it it has is through this wellhead that that was mentioned here okay where you have some sort of a seat okay you have some sort of a, a seat and then you have the next the next tubular okay the next casing has some sort of a wedge okay such that simply when you lower it into the well it's going to simply to lay on is going to lay on the previous Okay, so the inner casing usually puts all the weight on the outer, let's say the intermediate. Okay, then the intermediate lays all the way on the on the surface, and then the surface lays all the way on the conductor. Okay, so why do we care about this drilling stuff? Okay, because the weight of the well is not supported by the platform; it's supported by the soil. Okay. So that that's something very important. Okay, the platform hasn't has it doesn't have to be made for holding the weight of the of the well. Has to hold all other things. Okay, just be be careful of, of that. Yeah, maybe I should use some other color here, right? Okay, in a very simplistic way, actually the system is much more complicated. Those of you taking courses in drilling, you probably know how complicated it can be. It's not only to hold the weight, but also has to make a seal. Okay, because inside the pressure is very high. So if you just make the support, this pressure, which is very high, it might also tend to leak to the outer pipe. Okay, and if that outer pipe doesn't tolerate that high pressure, it's going to burst, it's going to break. So you not only need to support the weight, you also need to make a seal here, such that the outer pipe, which is very big, okay, but doesn't tolerate pressure, is not exposed to the pressure inside, which is very high. Okay, but we, we are keeping it simple. Also sometimes what you need here, for, for these whales, okay, you need some sort of a centralizer that you have seen. I, I might have a picture. Okay, but basically you have some sort of a centralizer that is making sure if the distance is very, very long, okay, simply is making sure to keep it straight such that it can transfer load in the same axis, okay. Remember, once you have a, slightly b a slight bend and you have a load, that will tend simply to to make it uh, to deform it more. Okay, let me see if I have I have a f okay. Here you see all the wells. That's uh, 
I think that's Eva Rosen, right? I don't think it's Greek, it's Eva Rosen. Okay, so you see all oh, wells coming up, the conductor, everything is simply coming up, and then you have it's simply like an onshore, like an onshore um, well. Okay, and you see the wells coming up here. Now, when we talk about some, if if let's say it's also a platform, but it's a bit uh, the water depth is, is too big, or you also have spar and TLP. In that case, you cannot leave the whole weight on the you the transfer. Let's say we have our well, right? The conductor, okay, which, what is the depth of the conductor? Our driller friends, no? Yeah, I think it's something around 60, is it 60 meters, conductor? Yeah, you have to check, okay? But, when you have a very long, let's say a thousand meters water depth, okay, until you reach the surface. Simply that you cannot ensure, simply you, you cannot ensure that it will follow, simply you have too much length, okay, the elasticity starts being very important. So you cannot ensure that all the load that you have here of all the strings will be transferred to the soil, simply it's not possible. Okay, so in that case, what you make is you make a wellhead. Okay, you make a subsea wellhead. Okay, where you part of the the majority of the load of all the casings they are transferred. So if we are going to make our drawing again, something like that. Okay, most of the loads are transferred at that level. Okay, they are transferred on th this subsea wellhead, and only a few. Let's say only one casing. Let me just get rid of that. Okay. And the tubing is held by. Okay, the tubing is also hanged on this pipe. Okay, that's a tubing, for example, that goes all the way down. And the tubing also needs to have some some structure like that, okay? The tubing hanger. Okay, so you have a riser that is basically communicating any of the, the, the casing strings that you have here. And then you have inside, you have the tubing hanger and maybe also part of the load of the hanger is transferred um, is transferred on the subsea wellhead. Okay, but the point is that not everything, not all the weight is is held by by the um, and is not held by the TLP and the spar. Okay, how is it held by? So if we make if we make our again, let's make in a bit more simplistic. We have our well. Okay, then we have this upper part. So the idea is that when we have these structures that they move significantly up and down, the well is always in the same place. Okay, it remains in the same place. So you add some flotation device, which can be an air can, such that it will be always in the same position. It will allow some movement, but it's always pulling up all of that pipe, all of that riser, and all of that tubing is keeping it relatively in the same height. Okay, and then around it you have your spar. Okay, you have your spar here. Okay, that that one is moving up and down, up to three meters, okay, of movement. So the well is fixed, this one is moving up and down, and then you have a connection where you connect the well to the rest of the system, to the separator, manifold, etc. Okay, so I think I had some, you know, very poor drawing, but I have a better drawing here.
Okay, but you need to have the secondary wellhead to transfer most of the weight to the soil. Okay, you don't carry all of that weight with the cans because otherwise it will be too big. Okay, but basically you have here from a paper from the OTC, you have subsea wellhead, then you have this riser coming up. In this case, it's only production. Then you have this buoyancy can, okay, which are filled with air to keep the buoyancy. And then here at the end, all of that is relatively fixed. It might move a bit to the right or to the left, but it's always kept on the same position. Okay? And then you have this flexible line, and here on this platform, that's what is moving up and down. Okay. Also, you might have, let's see. Um, close. You might have some other. So that's how the 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 cans look like. Okay. I'm just going to put to put some color to the notes. And I had one more. Okay, this is one more where you have a combination of system, of systems. Okay, and from another OTC paper. Okay, where you see you have exactly the same, but now the riser is taking a casing. Okay, maybe why do you want to have access from the casing from this well? You might be doing gas injection, right? So you might be doing it through the casing, through this annular region. And you have these air cans, and you have here some sort of a motion compensator, okay? The same way that they use for offshore drilling. So these are the two systems we have. I think, I thought I copied up. I think it's here. Okay? simply like that system in which this one stays always in the same place and then you have this system of pistons and compensators that depending on the movement of the floating rig they they adapt okay to to close the, the distance and to expand the distance okay so let me take a screenshot of that Okay, and you can find in the compendium there is a very simple sketch of that of the two systems we have. Top compensator, uh, people working in control, they have done a lot of work how to compensate for when a wave comes, um, how to compensate in the best way. Okay, or these buoyancy cans that uh, don't require too much, okay? Um, but the whole point here is to say that first, it's important the transfer of loads, okay? So if you want the, maybe it's too long, the extension of that, or for especially for deep water, if you have spar and TLP, not the load you has to be transferred to the soil, okay? Only part of the load is is handled by the spar and the TLP, okay, or by the buoyancy cans. So for that, you need to have a secondary wellhead on the on the on the soil, okay, like a they call it a mud line wellhead. Okay, where you transfer the load from the casings, all the casings to the conductor. Okay. Okay, now let's let's uh, change a bit the, the let's talk a bit about subsea layout of subsea layout of subsea production systems because there are two things here that are important for for the development of the field. Okay, there are two things that are very critical. So. How does the how do I 
decide how to arrange or how to organize my, my wheels in my subsea system. Okay? And there are a few options. Um, one of them is um, using that is a preferred in Norway and that is a, a template wells. cluster okay and basically I create a structure where I is a structure that houses all the wells okay that structure typically has at least in the North Sea it can be done for more number of wells for 6 for 12 but basically I have four slots for well so that is a well slot and in here I have a module that I simply use to collect the production from these wells. Okay, so we can call this is a manifold. So this approach is useful. I can just that will be from one drilling location, right? If I have my targets someplace here, from one drilling location, and I drill deviated wells to reach all of my targets from relatively the same location. Okay, so if my reservoir is not too spread, I can reach it through with my drilling ship, okay, or Jacob or whatever. Okay, I can reach I can reach uh, from the same location, and then I save having to move the the ship from location to location. And maybe I can show you a figure, how it looks like. Okay. So that's how it looks like. Maybe I think I have another which is a bit better. Okay. Okay, like this one. Okay, in which you see you have here your wells, your four wells and all of them they go down and again where is the weight of the wheel held is not by the template okay it's by the conductor so the wheel can actually move relatively to the to the template okay they are not they are not attached so the wheel usually when it starts producing it gets hot it expands and then when it stops producing it gets cold it shrinks okay so it has some movement up and down and that happens independently from, from the template. The template is not fixed with the well. And you see here you have some covers that those are the ones that you open to, to drill the well, to have access to the well, to do intervention on the well, and then you close it. Okay? This is the option preferred in Norway. Okay? And basically Equinor likes this design and also it, it gives protection against uh, fishing, against uh, nets, against many, many different things. So they require that the, the offshore stru uh, subsea structures, they have this protection. They have a protective structure. Okay. Then the other option we have, we have clustered satellite wells. And again here, all wells are relatively close to each other. They can be drilled from the same drilling position. Okay, here I should put a drilling tower. Okay. okay. Here, wells are close to each other. But they are not on the same template. That's what I call a template. This one here is a template. The structure that houses that houses this well but not they are not on the same but are not on the same template okay so you can see that very typically you have the well which is standalone okay but they are relatively close to each other and then you have a central unit where you collect the production you connect each well to that manifold Let's call it manifold. 
okay and you collect and and send the production to to the facilities and that looks something like this okay Had another figure, something like that, also. Okay, you see here. The there is another way they um, okay, like here. You see the wells, and you see the two lines. It has two lines, so that's what we are going to discuss a bit next. Okay, because that's very important for for my design. But uh, you have the wells and you have a central collecting unit and then you have two pipes in this case coming out, okay, taking it to the facilities. But in this case I can drill all wells from the same location. And the connection between the wells and these uh, manifolds, uh, they are usually made through a component called a jumper. Okay, which might be uh, is is typically a rigid piece of pipe. I mean, I think it has some. some yeah. That's how a jumper looks like. Okay, can be connected vertically. Is preferred when you are in deep water, but you use the the aid of the gravity to to connect it and put it in place. Or it can be also horizontal, that you, like in this case, okay? But it's a rigid piece of pipe. <coughs> and so we have, and this one is pretty much liked by the Americans, okay? Gulf of Mexico, also Total, they, they like that. And also you see it doesn't have any protection structure on top of the system. So you could have, in principle, you could have a problem with the nets, with uh, things dropping on the system. So, okay. And now we have the last option, which is satellite, simply satellite wells, which we try to avoid, okay? Simply satellite, but not in cluster. And that means I have might have one or two wells here with a manifold, but then I might have another well here, and then might have another well here, okay? All of them spread. That means I have to move to each one of these wells, I have to move the sheep from location to location. And if I have too many locations, that becomes expensive. Moving the rig from one place to another is an expensive, um, so that means not clustered. Okay, and this is preferred is basically you have different structures on the same reservoir or you have two reservoirs that you want to produce. If you have made of different structures and then you try, the only way is to use satellite wells. Okay. Now, Um, the way why we are going to to layout, okay, is because there are two things that that we have to to analyze when we develop the field, okay. One of them is the need of testing, the need for testing wells, okay, basically testing production, okay, and the other thing is the need for pigging. Of course, if I have certain targets, certain well locations that I want to make, my subsea system should be, should be as cheap as possible. Okay, I want to reduce cost. But on the other hand, there are two aspects that we have to take into account. The need for testing wells or the need for peaking. So for onshore wells, okay, how is... Um, 
how is testing typically performed? Let's say for platform wells. Okay, onshore or platform wells. How is the testing typically performed? Yeah, a test separator. Okay, you always, if you see a process diagram of your plant, of your platform, you always have the main separation train, okay? But you also have a test separator. So you have two separators, at least, okay? So you have the main separation train, separation train A. And remember, you have the first stage, high pressure, second stage, and third stage. But you also have, parallel to that, you have a smaller capacity test separator, okay? In which I have installed a meter that allows me to measure how much gas and oil I'm producing, okay? So if I have a well, let's say I have, let's make a well with this, okay? I want to have the option to produce to separator A or to the test. Let's say every month or every two months, I have to test how much that well is producing. Why do I need to perform testing? For many reasons, okay? We think that, oh, we are going to get more information, we are going to know more about the well, right? We're a bit naive, but it's basically the money, okay? The government wants to know how much they're going to get. Other companies, also partners, want to know how much they're going to get. And we are sitting here thinking, oh, for your reservoir model, production model, that. No, the main reason is allocation, okay? To define how much, how, how to split the cake, okay? So how do we do that? With what do we use to do that testing, to allow that, that testing? With something that we call a very central structure is a production manifold, okay? So the production manifold, Basically, I have two headers, okay? That means the production header, and I have the test header. And from this header, I simply direct the production to each separator. Now, what happens upstream? Upstream, I have a common line then I split, and then I have two valves, which are the routing valves. Okay? And I might even have, like, um, I might even have, like, a check valve, okay? To avoid uh, backflow. But basically, I want to send the well to, to normal production, regular production. This one should be open, this one should be closed. Okay, I want to test the well, I close this one and I open this one. Okay, so that's what we call the test manifold. Or the production manifold. Production manifold. <clears throat> and if I have another separator, let's say the production of my field is very high, so I cannot use only one separator. I can also add another header and another routing valve, okay, to connect to that. If I have another separation train B. Okay, now how do I connect the next well? I don't want to test only one well, okay? I want to test all of them. I connect it exactly in the same way. You should have one line, splits again, or like that, okay? And all of them, you have one common header that takes the production from all wells to the production train, or it takes the production from one well to, to the test uh, separate, and then I measure. You can see that in platform wells or in dry Christmas trees, And you can also see onshore. So let's see, before we take a break, let's see how, okay. Do you recognize here on this, on this picture, the upper one? That's a field in Libya. 
So you recognize here the production header and the test header. Okay, production is this one, and this one is the test. Okay, so these two they go to the production separator, this one goes to the test separator. Where are the wells coming from? From here, okay, all of these lines, I have the wells someplace here, they are buried, and then they come up here. So that comes from the well one, then you have two valves, which are the routing valves. Okay, so then you can decide, you open this one, you close this one. That one flows to production, this one flows to test. The second picture, which one is test, which one is uh, production? Right. That's a field in Colombia. Production, test, okay, always smaller. Uh, routing valves, here and here. So where are the wheels coming from? Down here, okay? So the wheels are someplace here, come up, and you can decide if here or here. Now, people ask about this picture. Well, we have only one pipe coming out. So where is the test separate? On the truck. Disappear. On the truck, that's one option. Okay, but basically you have these two. That's a production, that's a test. And you have your well here that you can decide if to produce up to here or up to here. And here I have my meter. Okay? So the meter in that picture, in that photo from that field, that was my former boss here. So my the meter is on that line, it's not visible from here, but it's connecting from this direction to the test, again to that manifold, okay? So there you have a flow meter, in this case with very heavy oil, that you close that valve, open this one, flow to test, flow through the meter, and then back to production, okay? Like one of you said, instead of having a meter, you can also use a, um, um, a test separator, which is very for land is very is very you know compact. Okay, that's what we can use for land on land. But we don't have that subsea. Okay, we cannot come with this truck, put it there every time we want to measure. Okay, so let's take a break and then come back. Why do we care? Okay, about this manifold. What does it cost on, on my system? Okay, but let's take a break. Uh, let's say we come back 120. So we said we identified a few configurations, right? We said template uh, wells, which are in a structure that has usually serves for protection, has everything inside, manifold. Also, you can connect the umbilical. That's what you use to control. Inject chemicals for flow assurance. You also use for open and closing the valves. You can use uh, cluster satellite wells in which... Um, each well is separately, it's a different unit, and you join it with the manifold You with a, a jumper. If it's close enough, you use a jumper. And you see here you have, in that case, the umbilical is not unified with the template. Okay? All the hydraulic lines, chemical lines, they are separate. It comes here, the umbilical, you have a subsea distribution unit 
okay that distributes the SDU sub C distribution unit okay and then the hydraulic lines the chemical methanol injection scale inhibitor corrosion inhibitor they go to the well and then the last one which we don't really like because it's expensive is only if there are you know if if really the spread I need to change the location of the rig okay or the deviation will be too much or the reach is too extreme so for those cases I use satellite wells but not cluster they work in a similar way but I don't have a group of wells I might have a few okay now one thing that applies and that is important for any case we are focusing on the Norwegian case but also for the Gulf of Mexico is the need for testing and let me just move that with the way okay so in in platforms or in uh, onshore we simply have a test separator is the most is the easiest and then I use the production manifold to define you know which one goes to test, which one goes to production. It's also, maybe let's make a, a break here. That when multiple trains, trains are used, typically you have to you have to balance production. Might be some wells that have too much gas, and if you put all of these wells in the same train, it will reach the gas processing capacity. Okay, so you want to distribute it evenly on the train. So uh, usually, uh, 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 will be a, a routing studies performed. to balance Q oil, Q water, and Q gas in it for each train. Okay. Because if a train has some restriction on the rate of gas, for example, and you have a train which doesn't have that problem, you can move part of the wheels to that separate. And then you can, the system stops being bottlenecked. For each train to avoid bottlenecks okay. now what about subsea how how what happens subsea and subsea depends a bit on the region okay for example in Brazil they're very strict and I have put here part of the an extract of the regulation and you have the link you can find anybody reads Portuguese here in class? No? No Portuguese here? No? Okay, so I will try to save the the day. So, you have to use, okay, deben ser utilizados, separadores de testes, so as test separators, must be used, period. No other method or test tanks for the test well test okay you have to trust you know all the rest but here basically <laughs> what he's saying is must use uh, in like a Tarson Jane language must use a test separator or test tank for well testing and this is very categorically must use no other testing method is re is approved is accepted by the Brazilians so what does that means for our subsea system and for the cost of the field and for the layout of the field let's say we have okay let's start with this let's say we have a system in Brazil with satellite wells we try to drill all of this from the same location. Okay, then we have this manifold. 
and then we have to put a line going all the way to an FPSO. Okay, remember Brazil is deep, so we have to have a, it's usually with subsea wells and FPSO. Okay, what does it mean this requirement from the Agencia Nacional de Petróleo, which is the National Petroleum Agency, ANP, stands for uh, National Petroleum Agency. Okay, so what does it mean for my field? If I have here, let's say that pipe, okay? Take that pipe, let's remove the FPSO, okay, and that pipe goes to a train separator, to a production separator. So let's put here a subdivision that's on the platform. Maybe let's make it in, in red. That means platform or FPSO. Actually, it's, a, it's an FPSO. The only approved test method is by test separator. That means if I want to test well one, what do I have to do? Close all the other wells, okay? If each well is producing 10,000 barrels a day and the test takes two days, how much do you, do you lose? Okay, 30,000 barrels today, 60,000 barrels. How much is that in money? 360,000, okay. How much do you lose that if you do that every, you know, let's say eight times per year? How much, I think it has to be done every, every 190 dias, okay? 90 days has to be tested. So, 90 days uh, testing interval. Okay, so that will be how many times per year? Four, huh? four times how much is it costing for three whales? Uh, like $400,000, so that is how much? One million that you lose, okay, due to testing. And if you have more whales, producing on the same you have also to shut them down so not acceptable okay so what do we do in that case to avoid um, to avoid shutting down wells we put another separator here okay on the FPSO does the production and does the test and then we have to put a separate line coming here and that investment might be a few million dollars, hundred million dollars, but it's going to save that cost in testing that you're going to have for along the life of the field. So how do I decide, how does it look inside, okay? When I look here inside, how do I have to make the arrangement to allow the well four to go either to production or to test? That's going to be one homework, okay? Exactly similar to this one, right? I have to put, if I have two lines, go, let's go from downstream, upstream. I have two lines, I have to put two headers, okay? And each well should connect to each header. Okay, so actually the way I do it on this box, let's make the box slightly bigger, this manifold. Okay, you have one header here that is connected to the production line and one header here which is connected to the test line and then you have my wells out when they come in where I'm going to split where am I going to put the routing valves do I put them on the well or do I put them on the manifold why two lines okay then it's more costly if you make the split here you will need two lines okay remember some of you did it last year okay well not you but the students okay before you put the valve oh I put it here floating subsea okay no you we cannot leave anything floating subsea subsea has to be only on the sea has to be only the lines everything else has to be inside 
a template. Okay, so I come here and I put two routing valves connecting each. Each again, I have one valve and then I put another valve and so forth. So I decide one line, I have it always closed, there is no flow. When I need to do testing, I open and then I, I flow. Okay? It's expensive. The manifold is more complex. You need to add an umbilical to control those valves. Okay, so you need to add an umbilical to control here, and you need to add the umbilical to control also the wells. Okay, you have this distribution unit. It's going to be more expensive, but then you fulfill the requirements of the government, okay? That you have to that you have to fulfill. They don't accept anything else. Okay. So that will be what is inside here is a production subsea production manifold. I can also have the same case if I have what we what we discussed before a template a well a template clustered clustered wells okay you remember I had a common structure for all wells so I had two here I had two slots here and then I had one slot in the center that's where I put the manifold Okay, so basically each well comes inside, and then I have two pipes, and then I have one one pipe here, the test and the production. And then I have a valve, okay, and this will be the manifold module, and this is the well module. And that's what we use in the in the in the Norwegian continental shelf. We like to group wells inside a, uh, this uh, template, and then we also put the manifold on the template. So let's see if I have some. Okay, so that's how it looks like the template with the manifold, which is in the center. Those are from DNV these uh, images okay so you see very clearly you have the well is going through here you see you see you have a guide to guide the the drilling bit you have a guide here and that's where the wells go and you have here in the center that manifold that I think is worth if we take a closer look to see if you understood correctly what we have Okay, where are the two headers here? It says main headers. I'm saying the test, remember, you need to have two, right? You have two lines coming out. So you have here some place or there, some two lines coming out. Okay? So you try to find for two headers. Okay, test and production. This one with one header. Okay, and the one behind that we don't see very well is the other head. Okay, so where are the lines connected? The lines that take to the platform? They are connected here. Okay. And actually, the pipe, it has, it's a pipe goes like that, continues like that, and goes all the way here. And here is closed. Okay, such that you have these two headers. And why you have that, you will understand, we are going to talk about pigging, which is the second thing we have to take into account, okay, for subsea layer. But you have here the two headers. So where is the connection to each well coming? Remember, the manifold was like that, and the wells were placed like this, right, around that manifold. So the well should come someplace from here. You see this connection? This connection comes with a lot of other things, okay, the hydraulic line, uh, 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 
hydrogen uh, inhibitor, scale inhibitor, then you have this strange term, okay? Why do you have this strange term? When it expands and cools. Okay, when the wellhead comes start to go up and down, this one is fixed in the same position. That one is laying on the seabed. The well, on the other hand, when you produce expands, and when you stop producing, shrinks. Okay. And this change can be maybe 20 centimeters, maybe 10 centimeters. If you put a rigid connection of pipe, it breaks. You have leakage. Okay. So that's why you give some flexibility to the system by making it like a, like a spiral design, such that it, when it goes up, the flexibility of the structure captures the, uh, the expansion. And then you have the two valves, which are the two routing valves, okay? One routing valve goes to the other header, one routing valve goes to this header. Okay. So you, you should be able at least to look at that and start to strip all the important things, okay? It has a lot of, a lot of things inside, but you see, routing valve for well one, routing valve for well two, Routing valves for well three, routing valves for well four. And these are other things that we, you know, don't care, don't care too much. But basically, when we have to inject, for example, open and close valves on the well, okay, we need to send high pressure fluid through the umbilical. Then you have a distribution unit that sends it to the well. Okay, and that's how you open and, and close valves. Okay. <clears throat> so you have one of the reasons is that we have to be very careful for testing is um, it's you know if they approve what is the testing method that is approved in the case of Norway if you go to the website of NPD and this one is in English okay Okay, so they say about multi-phase meter. Multi-phase meter is simply a meter in, remember, in a, in a test separator, what I am doing basically, I'm separating the phases, okay? I'm separating oil and the liquid, uh, oil and gas. And I'm measuring separately. I know the meter for liquid works and I know the meter for gas works. When I have a multi-phase meter, I is a meter that's supposed to, without any separation, to measure how much oil, gas, and water you have. Okay, people are a bit, so, you know, skeptical to these uh, separators, to these uh, meters. But you see here on the Norwegian regulation, may be used if traditional single phase measurement, which means test separator. Okay, a bit obscure, but basically separating requires separation is not possible for financial reasons because you see very quickly for every field if you have to put two lines and you have to do it for each template and you have 10 templates that is a big cost especially you're in deep water rough area and the multi-phase meter can then be used as a fiscal meter okay just to split the cake remember the whole purpose we, we are a bit naive, but, you know, is to split the cake. So, how do we... <coughs> Let's say if you are going to use a multi-phase meter, okay? If a multi-phase meter is to be used. Okay? And let's say I have again the same arrangement of four wells and I have one central manifold unit here. And I have now the whole idea is that I now have just simply one pipeline, one flow line to the FPSO. Okay? So how do I put my meter? Where can I place my meter in this system? I can place one meter per well, right? The cost of a meter, how much is it? Millions. Huh? Yeah. Multi-phase meter. 
is on the order of US dollars, okay? On the lower range, it's, it's uh, so if you your well is a good producer, if it's going to pay back that meter, you put a meter on each well. If not, you try to share, okay? You have to use a meter for a group of wells. So how do I put a, a shared meter in this uh, in this arrangement? Inside the, hmm? Inside, the manifold. inside the manifold, okay? But what do I need to put it inside the manifold? Remember the case of this Colombian field. I have to put e the same thing. If I have a meter, I have to put one production manifold, right? And then I have to put one test manifold, okay? And then I have to put the meter in between, okay? So that will be my meter. I have to put, of course, some check valves. Yeah, let's, let's make it, you know, let's... Okay, so I have a test header, then I put my check valves. Okay, and then if I'm coming in with this well, I have to put one valve. I have to make it even bigger. Okay, I have one valve, routing valve here, and one routing valve here, okay? Such that when the well is on production, I simply, that one should be open, and I continue here. This one should be closed. When the well is on test, I come from the test manifold, then I pass through the meter, and then again to the, to the line, okay? And that saves um, a lot of money. If I don't trust multi-phase meter, then I have to have two lines. Okay, I have to have two lines, and this is costly. The Norwegian government doesn't require, but you have to have a very good justification why you want to use simply, you can trust on multi-phase meter, okay? Because multi-phase meter requires some, some uh, calibration. Okay, and then we don't have much time, so I think we can go to pigging. That pigging is slightly is is related. Okay, the need for pigging. Okay, and pigging basically means that you send a pig, what is called a pig, in the pipeline, pipeline and flow line. You don't send through the well, okay? It doesn't go inside the well, but it goes through the pipeline, flow line, and through the manifold. And one of the main intentions of sending a pig, if for example, is in a gas line to remove water, to remove liquids, okay? And the way the pig looks like, let's make a pipe. And the pig usually has two parts that they make kind of a seal. You have one center part, then goes like that, okay? And you are pushing it from typically with water or with crude, okay? Or if you're removing liquid, you have to do it with some gas, okay? With nitrogen, for example. And then you are, let's say, let's change a bit here this diagram okay let's say you have liquids accumulated someplace in the system okay so you're pushing it until it reaches the liquid brings it back to the other side okay another uh, use it has is to on oil lines to remove water Okay. Also, is useful for chemical treatment. 
okay for example in chemical treatment you send two pigs with some substance you want to use for treat the pipe in between And also another use of pigging is for what? For wax, okay, scrapping. Wax typically we're going to talk about it later, okay, but basically on the on the walls of the pipe, wax is alkane components that are long chain alkanes, they start to deposit and they start to deposit on the pipe wall. Okay, basically because temperature drops and also they start, it's colder on the wall. So they, these particles tend to stick, are driven by the, the pressure, the temperature gradient and they stick to the wall. Okay, if you leave the situation like that, it's going to become smaller and smaller and it's going to eventually be plugged. Okay, so what one thing you do is that you send the pig such, a, such that you scrap this wax from the wall. Okay, and at the end you have a big plug of wax that you are pushing all the way to the yeah to the platform. And one other use is uh, generally for cleaning, might be solids, liquids, etc. And, and one other use is uh, inspection. Okay. You can send a peak in which you put more things in between. Okay, you don't only put these two parts, but you put some instrumentation here, okay, that can measure, for example, the thickness of the pipe, can measure corrosion. So for a, for a variety of reasons, we want to make, we, we typically want to perform pigging. Okay, pigging, where are the pigs? Okay, these are some type of pigs. Okay, much better than my drawings, but you have different types. They have different uses. Here you have this one, which is like with instrumentation, has a lot of things that record. It's not connected uh, continuously. Okay, so it has to record the data, go through the pipe, and then you take out the data and you analyze it. That's one what comes on f in front of the pig, okay? A lot of, and this guy probably, he should get a prize for the best the most stolen picture photo on, in the history of petroleum i've seen him probably many times okay and you see here uh the pig simple pig with cups and uh, and a stem you have foam pigs all kind of all kind of pigs okay so how does that affect my the layout and the cost ultimately in pig you have to send the pig from some place and you have to retrieve the pig from some other place. You have to send the pig, the pig, because you have to be pushing. The pig is moved by, by hydraulic uh, pressure, either by, uh, not very much by gas, but typically by liquid. Okay, and you want to retrieve whatever garbage comes out of that. You have to retrieve it. Okay, so what is the simplest option we have to do that process? on the same place right on the same platform okay so i have the platform or the fpso so here i have my wells okay that we discussed before might be satellite might be template then i have here my manifold okay and i know here i have a line coming there so from there I know I can push the pig from there. And what do I have to make to retrieve the pig on the same place? Then I have to make a loop. Okay, I have to come here, make a loop, and then going back. On the same place. Such that I can use the pumps 
on the platform on the FPSO to push the pig and here I'm receiving all the fluids that come from the line. Okay. If I want to use the same loop for two templates for example I can simply do something like that. Okay, I have a line then something like this. Okay. So I send the peak and I retrieve the peak. And the launcher, I think I had a, an image of the launcher someplace. Yeah, here. Okay. So I think here normally. Uh, production goes some other place. Okay, so you close the system, you close these two valves, you pull the pig inside, relieve that lid, pull the pig inside, then close the lid, then open this valve, close this valve, and open this valve. And you start pushing from the back of the pig. Okay, then that's how it enters into the line. When you receive it, then the fluid going back is going this way. Okay. When the pig is approaching, this one is closed, this one is open, and this one is open, such that the pig can come into the receiver, and then you close here, close here, and then remove the pig. Okay. There are some uh, nice videos on YouTube if you want to, to see an animation. Okay, but the bottom line is that what is another way to... Yeah. So that's why, okay, we have this valve here. Okay, that's why we have this loop and we have this crossover valve. Okay, sometimes also called pigging valve. Because you have the two headers, normally they will be separated. Each well will be producing, you know, to eat each to one pipe but when you want to do pigging you open that valve and you simply flow round okay you simply flow, flow through the loop what is another way I could perform pigging hmm? a launcher a subsea launcher okay pigging can also be performed by a subsea launcher okay and that means even maybe in the manifold I have a facility where I can connect and that figure is going to be complicated okay if I have just one line going to the platform I locate here a peak launcher that has that arrangement of valves that I told you about before. And then you can come with a vessel and then you connect the hose and you send the peak. Okay, you send the peak to um, to the platform. Also something to realize is that the the diameters that I mentioned should be, you know, the pig can fold, okay? It has some flexibility to fold. And there are some designs that they are made for different diameters. But it's not, it's not sometimes it can get stuck, okay? If you get a stuck pig, you are in, in trouble. So they prefer simply to use the same line, the same size, through which is the pig is will pass, okay? So you have here two lines and they are same diameter and they're also what we call full bore that means all the valves they have to be made such that when they are fully open they don't restrict the cross section everything should have the same cross section same cross section okay 
so just a conclusion here because uh, and then with that we finish if frequent pigging is uh, is expected for any reason for inspection for cleaning for wax then uh, you want to put this loop okay a pigging loop must be um, uh, must be deployed okay if frequent pigging if pigging is um, a rare okay or is pigging is is not very often is not required often then you can use a subsea pig launcher if you know maybe something that you will need once or twice not much in the life of the field then you use a subsea pig launcher or also if the pipeline is very long okay like in the case of snow white you have 140 kilometers of pipe if you're going to put two that will be what was the cost of this pipe i think it was half a billion dollars i think so if you have to have two that's that's a heavy cost okay so pigging also is typically done done in oil export flow lines okay not only in the field but also on oil export flow lines to remove wax deposits mm -hmm. like in the case of Ivar Osen and Edvard Grieg Ivar Osen is sending the the um, and also in the case of Peregrino okay you remember in Peregrino we have the well platform we're going to finish soon don't be stressed okay so remember we had the production here we had a small separator then we had a pump and that was sending the fluid all the way to the FPSO you have to do pigging on that line okay so you send a pig from here to pig and remove the the wax every certain time okay depending on remember when you are pushing this block of wax you have to push it with some pressure and that pressure should not exceed the maximum allowable pressure of the pipe so you should establish your pigging frequency according to the maximum pressure that you need to push how much you can accumulate you know to be within the allowable pressure okay i think it took a bit longer time than i thought but these things are important okay basically we talk a bit about uh, dry Christmas tree uh, and wet tree and then we talk about uh, three different configurations and that is very important what kind of metering you need and it's very important if you need pigging or not that can change dramatically your layout and can change dramatically your cost okay so that was a long day just to tell you these three things but okay. okay see you tomorrow any question before we close no see you tomorrow